Guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to make this gorgeous jewelry box. It came out amazing. The piston fit trays are amazing. This handle is inspiration from my woodworking idol, Matt Kenny, who I will link his Instagram down below. If you don't know who he is, I highly recommend you check him out. He is a masterful box maker and furniture maker. This is a gift for a friend of mine who did some superhero-esque things for me over the course of a couple years that really made a difference in my life. So I took a lot of care in making this box. It really is something special to me and something I really wanted to have be just my absolute best work. So I hope you enjoy this video because I really put a lot into it and it was a lot of fun. I want to start off by talking about book matching. So let's head over to the table saw. All right, so here's my resawed board. It used to look like this and now it's perfectly resawed. And the reason that you do that is it gives you a perfect grain match. You can see these boards are perfect mirrors of each other this way, as well as this way. And then they're gonna be perfect mirrors this way. And you wanna retain that because then it'll look like continuous grain around your whole box. So the way that you do this, so you have a front, a side, a back, aside, you need to make sure that you cut your boards down on the same side to retain this grain match. However long your two pieces are gonna to be together, minus the kerf, you need to make sure that you trim these down first before separating your sides and then make sure that you separate in the correct place. We're gonna be using miters here. And so when we cut these down, we're gonna try and use, as, we're gonna use a thin kerf blade and then a 45 and try not to remove any material off the top. So we're gonna go ahead and do this on the crosscut sled. We're gonna trim them down to size, make sure everything's nice and square first, and then we will do our miters. All right, it's time to separate our pieces. Here's a little trick I like to use when I'm doing boxes for uh, losing as little grain as possible. It's great for removing box lids. Is I take a seven and a quarter inch thin kerf skill saw blade. This one's only one thirty second thick. And I use that when I need to save as much grain as possible. So we're gonna cut them straight at 90 and then we're gonna go ahead and put our 10 inch blade back in and make sure that we're just cutting to the very, very corner so we don't lose any of that grain. And then we should have a perfect grain match still. You do need to make sure that you turn one of your pieces around so that you're removing the correct piece. We're gonna go with 10 and a half inch long sides 5.5 inch sides that works right into the 1.618 Fibonacci number. I try and stick to for boxes because it really does make a difference visually when you get that nice golden ratio. So let's separate these. Then we'll then do the 45s and then get to some rabbits for our lid and bottom. One thing to always remember when you're doing boxes, it's really good to sand the inside before you do glue up, but you have to be careful because you don't want to sand too much because then you can start to ruin your joinery. So you want to be real careful to stay away from your joinery, but kind of clean up the inside. I did it to 150. We cut rabbits in the top and the bottom. The way this box is going to be, it'll have a lid. There'll be no hinges. It's going to have a lid that goes in and out. And then it's gonna have a bottom that's a different color wood that elevates the box, giving it a shadow line. So what we're gonna do now is do a glue up and I'm sure you've seen how to glue up a box with tape. I'll show you again. Here's a cool thing. So you wanna see why the grain match matters. Like you can see all this matches. You can see all these lines line up with each other. But when you take your piece on this far side and move it over here, you can see it still matches up. So that means that when you go around the box, it'll look like one continuous board. And that's why miters can be really cool here. You don't really lose it with dovetails or box joints, but you know, a miter is a, a very clean line for sure. So what we're gonna do is take a straight edge. Um, I know this board is straight because I just jointed it. And then we're just gonna work slow because you don't wanna rush this. We're gonna make sure everything is just perfectly perfectly aligned. You're gonna make sure they're nice and level. And then you just take a piece of tape and you go out the outside. You don't wanna go all the way down to the bottom. We're gonna repeat that and then you only do three of the edges and then we're gonna 
Flip it over, put glue in there, fold them up, tape the last corner, check everything for square, check everything for square again, and then check it for square because you need it to be square. And then we'll uh, throw like a strap clamp or some F clamps on it just to kind of make it square, pull it into square if needed. And then we'll let that dry. And tomorrow we'll get working on the bottom, the top and the tray. All right, glue up was stress-free. It's square, no gaps in our joinery. Most you can hope for, right? I have this beautiful piece of Wangi I've been saving. If you haven't seen Wangi before, it is a very rare African hardwood. The price reflects that, but it is so gorgeous. And the end grain is just, it's the coolest looking end grain you've ever seen. So what that's gonna be amazing for is our miter splines. You're gonna see this really cool vertical lines in it that it just looks amazing. And then we're gonna do the bottom and the top. So we're gonna resaw this and make some panels. Uh, what's great about Wangi is when you put finish on it, it, it looks like ebony basically. It turns almost black. So I'm really excited to, uh, to the contrast of the black and the white oak. I think it's just gonna be spectacular. We're gonna make some some trays, which is kind of the same rinse and repeat for the box. We're gonna do miters. I'm not gonna worry about grain wrap really because they're the interior trays, so they would never be visual from the outside unless you took them out. We're probably gonna use leather on the bottom or felt, I haven't decided yet. So I'm gonna check back in with you when we're putting dividers in those trays because I have a really cool trick to get those dead nuts and make sure that they're in the exact same place across the drawer. Let's head over to the table saw. We're gonna do a little trimming this down and some resawing and glue up some panels and then we'll put together our trays. All right, our trays are fitting perfectly. Now, piece of advice, trays only get tighter as you put finish and things like that. So you want them to be kind of tight in this stage, but they should be able to fall out, but go in, you know, kind of tightly. You should have to push them in, but not be, have to pound them in, ladies, gents. I was able to keep my grain match, which was nice. Relatively, I think we missed, maybe we lost an eighth or something of our grain match, but pretty perfect. Now, here's the important part about trays. You can put your dividers wherever, but you need to ensure that you remember that your pieces are facing each other and that you may not be dead center. So uh, what you do, let's say these are our two sides. Remember, they're facing each other like this. When you cut the dado for your dividers, you need to make sure the tops are facing each other. You obviously wouldn't cut them at the same time, but you need to ensure that you don't cut them with both the tops facing the blade. You need to do one with the top facing the blade and one with the top facing away. And that'll ensure that no matter where you put your divider, it's gonna be in the exact same spot. Use a stop block on your sled, and then you can just cut all the way through. It's not gonna matter. We're gonna cut a dado for the bottom of our thing. And if you were to flip the drawer, oh, I mean, sorry, if you were to flip the tray over, you would see that it has a through dado, but Man, I've made a lot of boxes and I never on my own have ever flipped a drawer over, to, flipped a tray over to look at it. And honestly, 
I don't think it's something to beat yourself up about. I don't think anybody would ever judge you because you have a through dado there. But up to you, if you want to do it with a router and do a stop dado, you can. Sliding dovetails would be a great way to attach a divider, but I'm just going to do a dado and some glue. With everything together, we're not going to put any splines because the bottom is going to sort of make sure that everything's held together. And then remember that once you get finish on it, it's going to tighten up a little bit more. So when you go to sand this, sand it really good before you put finish on because even if you have like a 64th gap all the way around, you're still gonna get that piston fit. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the dados for our dividers. We're gonna cut the dado for uh, our drawer bottom. And I like to wait to size my dividers uh, both in width and length until I have my dados. And that way I could just slowly sneak up on a really good fit. And I'll just put some tape on there and then we'll do the glue up all together. So we'll glue in the bottom and the dividers and then glue the whole tray together at the exact same time. Let's get these cleaned up and dadoed out and then uh, we'll get to putting these trays together. trays are done. The blue felt with the white oak looks so good. I'm like really excited about this. Now, when you glue up trays, things can happen and they happen to me, which is I cut the bottoms the perfect size, but when I put the felt on, there was a little bit of felt hanging off one corner or both corners of both trays and it opened up one of the miters on both trays a little bit. But I'm going to show you a cool trick for closing those up and it just involves anything around a screwdriver or a chisel and you just roll it over and then just give it a little bit of sanding and it comes out so clean, it looks great. Now when you glue up your trays, if you kind of clamped in the middle to get your dividers to, to be tight, you can have a little bit of a bow. So make sure you look at those with a straight edge as you're fitting them up. Like I said earlier, as you start to glue and put finish, they just sort of expand a little bit. So when you're fitting them, make sure to do it like a sanding and then check, sanding and check, check with straight edges. You wanna try and keep those sides straight because visually when they're in there, it kind of looks better if there's a clean reveal around them. And you can have like a 64th or a 32nd and still get like a really nice piston fit. So don't be afraid to take some material off to get them to fit really nice and easy because remember, finish, expand. We're gonna put miter splines in our box. I have a great video I'm gonna link here where I show you five different ways to put in splines. We're gonna size up our lid and our bottom. We're gonna get the bottom glued in and then we're gonna start working on the lid. So I'm gonna check back in with you when we're doing the handle, which I have this really cool idea that Mike Kenny does, talking about him earlier where he wraps it in thread. I'm super excited about that. So let's get this thing. We're getting towards the end here. I love this feeling. I love making boxes. It's definitely my favorite thing to make. So let's get moving and uh, get this thing wrapped up.
right, so we are just about done. The splines are in and drying, the bottom's in there and drying. One of the things people always ask me when I glue a bottom in is like, what about wood movement? Walnut's gonna move an eighth to a quarter inch over eight feet. So if you divide that down to four and a half, five inches, I'm not worried about it at all. It'll move like a hair's width between the seasons, so I'm not worried about it at all. I've never had a box explode on me and I've been doing this for a long time. So one of the things, the reason that Matt Kenny inspired this box was I saw one of the handles poles that he does for his cabinets where he wraps it in thread and this is leather thread. Uh, so I really want to do that because I think it just looks cool. So we're going to use white oak to build sort of a Japanese style handle. It's kind of, Matt has like a very modern take on this that I think looks gorgeous. So we're going to do something sort of inspired by that. And then when we get to finishing, both white oak and wangi have very open grain. And so I'm going to try something new. I did some test pieces, uh, something that I really haven't done too much of before, but I'm going to fill all the grain with this wood filler, which is uh, timber mate, which I think is by far the best. It's a water-based filler. I have tons of colors of this. It's great. So we're going to fill the grain on the outside of the box, sand it all back off, do lacquer. And then on the inside of the box, I think we're just going to do a shellac and maybe a wax finish just to keep things from building inside and keep things moving smoothly in there. You gotta lubricate, you know what I mean? Let's head over to the table saw and start working on this table. All right, I'm gonna show this to you in real time. This isn't slowed down at all. <laughs> it's so incredible. And here's the top one and blam. Now, one of the things that I already know from Instagram people are gonna freak out about is wood movement. And oh my God, between the seasons, is this gonna stay? Wood's only gonna move a quarter inch over eight feet, especially white oak. It's very comparable to walnut. And you can see there's like a 16th inch of play in here. So there's no chance that this is ever gonna get too tight that those trays are gonna get stuck or not have that piston fit. Oh, it just never gets old. Guys, I'm real proud of this one. I, I Like I said in the intro, box making is my favorite thing to do. And this came out so, so good. Um, mistakes, let's talk about mistakes. The grain filler for the white oak was a mistake. It works, it looks great. The wangi is perfectly flat, it's gorgeous, but 
I chose the wrong color for the white oak, so I ended up having to sand it all out. I didn't have the right color. You want to match the dark part of the wood, not the light part. I messed that up. So I didn't end up doing it on the white oak. But with the waxing, which I'd only do on like my finest boxes where I wax something at the end that's going to be like a gift. I know I'm probably never going to refinish it again in my lifetime because it'll never come back to me. I'd like to wax it because it just, man, it really makes a smooth surface. Plus on the inside, it helps the trays with that piston fit. Uh, which is always so impressive. Like I said in the intro, let's talk about commission work. You know, one of the biggest questions I get is what would you charge for that or how do I price my work? Now, when I look at something like this, I personally would probably charge anywhere from $750 to $1,000 for this. If you're just dollar for dollar, you know, competing on some marketplace where there's other boxes, you probably get something more like 500, four to 500 for it. But let's look at the time frame. It took me about 16 to 20 hours to make this, depending on what you count for the time we spent filming. Materials, that's the great thing about box building. Materials are cheap. You know, it's probably 80 bucks worth of wood, if I had to guess. You know, it was all kind of off cuts I had sitting around my shop, which is why boxes are so great to make. They're really a rite of passage for woodworkers and you can do it with off cuts from other projects. When I got started, that's all I did was make boxes for like a year. That was all I wanted to do. It's great because, you know, with the tools that you have when you first start, they're usually not very powerful. So there's nothing really that needs a lot of power to cut these cuts that are needed for this kind of thing. So I really recommend making boxes, guys. It really is a big deal. And it's something that you can sell and is always a really, really appreciated gift. I'm really happy with this. My my friend that I'm giving this, the superhero I was telling you about, is probably gonna be pretty happy, I hope so. And if you're watching this, I hope you like it. Guys, thanks for watching. If you wanna support the channel, head over to the Cat's Moses store, pick up a dovetail jig, a stop block, or an apron. Stay safe in the shop. Have a wonderful day.